Isaiah chapter 7. Now what we left off was the reign of Ahaz. God sends Isaiah over to him and says, Hey, there are people who are planning a battle against you. Listen to me. Be quiet. It's going to be all smoke. It's not going to prevail. Verse 10, Moreover, the Lord spake again unto Ahaz, saying, Ask thee a sign of the Lord of thy God. Sign are for Jews, according to Corinthians, what Paul's uh, Gentiles require, uh, I believe, uh, I forget what it, but it says, Jews require a sign. They were built upon a sign. When Moses shows up in Exodus, he, he, he uh, turns the water into blood. He puts his hand in, it becomes leprous, it comes out white as snow. He throws his rod down, it becomes a snake. That's the foundation. And the wilderness journeys were all signs. Here, here's this manna. What is it? Here's a water from a flinty rock. Miracle, signs. He says, ask the sign of the Lord thy God. Ask it either in the depth or in the height above. God authors, uh, offers out to Ahaz a blank check. Ask any sign to prove what I just said. Verses uh, 4 to 9. Doubt. Gideon tells the Lord, say, Lord, I'm going to put this fleece out. Let it be wet only. Lord, I'm going to put this fleece out again. Let it be wet on the ground. Lord, I'm going to go into the camp. Show me a sign. The Jews are the only ones that are required by God to seek signs. Tongues are a sign, the Bible says. Not to believers, but to unbelievers. So he gives them this, this blank check in but Ahaz said, I will not ask, neither will I tempt the Lord. Now you can run that back to 2 Kings 16, 20. And it sounds good. But God told him. God said, ask of any sign. Well, I'm not going to ask. You're rebelling against God. Pious. I'm not going to tempt God. How can you tempt God when God said, ask? Where's the temptation? When God said, ask. There's no temptation there. And he said, hear ye now, O house of David. Judah, Jerusalem, the kings. It is a small thing for you to weary men. Taxation. Uh, you read about when, when uh, Samuel said that you're going to get a king. He's going to take your people. He's going to take the tenth of your land. He's going to make your women confessionary. He's going to take your crops. He's going to take your hand. And you know, the, the widows are going to be put under a burden. The fatherless are going to not be get proper judgment. And you know, you just put such a burden under the people that Jesus said, come unto me all year heavy laden. I'll give you rest. Those Pharisees, those Sadducees, those scribes are putting the people under great, great burdens that they weren't doing themselves. You couldn't go so far. You had to wash your hands. You had to do this. You had to do this. You had to go to the temple and exchange the coins because those are Roman coins. But there's one thing the government can do. It can put a burden and weary on people. But will ye weary my God also? They did in the wilderness. Man, God got angry with them. God got fed up with them. They tempted God in the wilderness. That was a temptation. Can God furnish a, 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 a table in the wilderness? That was temptation. 
God said, just follow Moses and I'll lead you all the way to the land. God gave this king. He said, listen, ask of any sign I'll give it. To prove my words. Therefore, the Lord himself. Does that sound familiar? Genesis 22. God will provide himself. There you have a, a, a cross reference that runs all the way back to the foundation of the Jewish people. Abraham talking to Isaac. God the Father talking to God the Son. Now, how many people missed that? Therefore, the Lord Himself, uh, that, uh, I'm not quoting for Ben, that uh, where's the sacrifice? God will provide Himself a lamb. You go back to Genesis 22 and read that. That is God Himself, the lamb, which you run over to John. How many years later? You run to John and says, Behold the Lamb of God. That goes all the way back to what Abraham was talking to Isaac. Now we we run into Isaiah and get this, because the date I have, which I, I'm not really sure about the dates, but here's a man that studied more than I did, and he says that B.C. 742. Now let me just run this a real quick reference back here real quick. Uh, Genesis 22, because this is very important. Let me, I'm not one that dates. I'm not going to date the rapture or anything like that, but when we look at the dates, what's going on here, 22, Genesis 22, the date here in my Bible is uh, 1872 B.C. Here we have 742 B.C. 1800 B.C. and 700 B.C., we have God himself. B.C., before Christ. You know, they changed it to B.C.E., before Christian era, take God right out of it. See, we're not going. We don't want to date the calendars by Jesus Christ. I want to get you. I want you to get the date here for me if it's correct. It could be off, plus or minus a few years. But 742 years before Jesus Christ is born, thereabouts, we have Isaiah speaking to the king of Judah, the king of Jerusalem, the the, the southern tribe, saying, "Uh." The Lord himself shall give you a sign. All right? I'll give you one. And boy, am I going to give you a sign. And you must get this because not only did they try to take the calendar off Jesus Christ, now they're going to try to take away the greatest prophecy in the Bible. But let's read what the Bible says first. Here's a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive. Impossible. A virgin is a woman that is absent of a man. No man has known a virgin. That's a sign. And not only that, and bear a son. All right, let's look at this for a minute. Here's the sign, Mr. Ahaz. A virgin is going to conceive and bear a son. Does Ahaz live to be seven, where, how old we, 742 years old plus? Ahaz, here's your sign, and you're not going to see it. Because you didn't want to tempt God. 742 years later, thereabouts, this sign comes to pass. But if you're a modern Bible, and I'm not going to get too much of it, but the, the virgin in the modern Bible is changed to a, a, a young lady, a young woman. Any young woman who, who reaches her, her time of life can have a baby. What's the sign about that? There are girls today in junior high and high school having babies left and right. What, what's the sign? With a, man, with a male partner. 
This says a virgin minus the man. Now that's impossible. So if you have a modern Bible with a modern preacher, you have given up on the virgin birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now do you know what you need to know to be saved? You have to believe in the virgin birth to be saved. You have to. If you've got a modern Bible, it is not a virgin birth. It's any young woman can give birth. So Mary slept with uh, Joseph and had a child. Mary went off with this guy and had a child. And even the Jews said to Jesus, we be not born of fornication. Denying. When they said that, they denied Isaiah 7. That was written to their king 742 years plus ago. When they denied the virgin birth, that, that, that was sealed. Now let's go on. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. The Lord himself shall give himself a lamb. Behold, a virgin shall concern. Impossible. Well, we got things today where we do a test tube. You still need the male part. Trying to be clean. Even if you did it in a test tube, petri dish, uh, coffee cup. You need a man and you need a woman. You need both parts. That's a sign enough right there, isn't it? The virgin birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. 742 years plus or minus before it happened. When Jeremiah writes, he writes a uh, Kaniah. Oh, her, 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 here, write this man childless to put into action this sign. No more of Kaniah's seed will be of the kings of David on the throne. Yeah, but God promised David and said, listen, forever your sons will be on that throne. Well, how are you going to do it when Jeremiah says, cursed be Kaniah? You have Mary, who is of David, not the kingly line, but of Nathan, David's son, but still of David. Okay. An impossible sign, a miracle, and bear a son. Well, guess what? That's a 50 50. She could bear a son or she could bear a daughter. She bared a virgin conceived by the Holy Ghost, Luke chapter 2, conceived and gave birth to a son, Luke chapter 2. Who she brought to the temple and had circumcised. You don't circumcise a daughter. And called his name Emmanuel, which is God is with us. I believe that's in Matthew. That was all prophesied to Mary by Gabriel. What a sign to a king that he's not going to be living when it happens. About something that's going to happen in his lifetime. Butter and honey shall he eat. Sweet, natural food. Butter is when you take milk and, and you uh, turn it. Honey. You know where honey comes from bees. That he may know to refuse evil and choose the good. And he, listen, he was tempted by Satan just as we're tempted. The Bible says in Hebrews that he had to learn obedience. He was put in subject of a mother and a father. Like we are. He had to learn. He had to choose. 
For before the child shall know to refuse evil, what age does a child know good and bad? At what ch what age does a child know that stealing a cookie from the cookie jar is wrong? I'm not going to do it. Or I shouldn't be reading uh, this book right now. I'm supposed to be in bed sleeping. Put the put the flashlight or the candle out and go to sleep. What age is that? And to choose good. Well, you eat, eat the carrots, not the cake. Need to brush my teeth and do my homework. When? Now watch this. The land that thou abhorrest. The land, that's Israel. He just said back here in verses 4, Take heed and be quiet. Fear not, neither be faint hearted for the two tails of these smoking firebrands. They're just smoke. There's no fire. For the fierce anger raising with Syria and the son of Remaliah. Because Syria, Ephraim, and the sons of Remaliah have taken evil counsel against thee, King Ahaz, saying, this is what they're saying, let us go up against Judah and vex it, and let us make a breach there, thereof for us, and set a king in the midst of it, even the son of Tabeel. We're going to destroy Judah, and we're going to set up our own king. And the Lord does say it, Lord, it shall not stand. And here we go into the virgin birth sign, and he says the land that God of Horus is the land of Israel. God is showing mercy in chapter 7, and then again he's showing wrath in the same chapter. And shall be forsaken of both her kings. Now, don't you know Jeremiah is there scratching his head saying, What did I just write? Isaiah. I'm talking to the king. I can reach out, King Ahaz. Yeah. Ow! What, what'd you pinch me for? I want to make sure you're real. Yeah, yeah. Well, I just wrote down. Now, let me ask you a question. What Jewish kings were there when Jesus was born? What Jewish kings were there when, when the proclamation went out, kill every child under two years old? What kings of Judah were there or of Israel at 12 years old when he sat in the temple? Not a one. It was Roman rule. Imagine this sign to Ahaz. I don't know how old he is. You go back and check his life in, in uh, Second Chronicles 28 and all that. But he doesn't live 742 years to see this prophecy. Isaiah doesn't live 742 years to see what he, what he said. Would you assume, let's uh, safely say, 740, 777 years later, here comes this virgin born child called Emmanuel out of hell, crosses the, the, the gulf into Abraham's bosom? They said we'll have no king but Caesar. What did they say a mouthful? I'm going to protect you, King Ahaz. Don't you worry. These guys are just smoke. Ask me a sign. Here's the virgin birth, and when this thing happens, there's going to be no kings in the land that I am angry with. What a prophecy. Okay, let's look at this sign again. Let's look at the details, and it was fulfilled 100%. Let's look at the details, and I can't give you the scientific numbers. I'm sorry. Verse 14. Again, 742 years before it happens. How's that one? All right, let's look at it. The Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive. That's one detail. That's impossible. But that's one detail. An impossibility. What are the odds of a possibility of a woman conceiving child without no male? Imagine if 
God made Eve first instead of Adam. Okay, Eve, I want you to be fruitful and multiply. Well, how long will it be before there was a population bam on the earth without Adam? It would have been Eve just all by herself. You know what God told Adam? He said, listen, populate the whole world. Replenish it. Oh, I got to give you a help me. That help me was to produce children. That's what the help me was. And to be a companion to the man. So you need a man and a woman to produce a child. So the first sign we see here is a complete impossibility outside of God himself and the Holy Spirit. Luke chapter 2. Now what are the odds of that one? Let's add and bear a son. Number 2. Well, you got a 50-50 chance there. It couldn't have been a woman because the, the leaders of the nation of Israel, those are, are the sons of of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. No daughter. I mean, we're not we're not the Catholic Church, and ain't a woman God. So it had to be a so. There's a fifty fifty chance on the nose, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Listen, they had an attitude when they named. John the Baptist. His name is John. Well, wait a minute. Whose name do you have in that your family? We want to call him uh, after his father, Zacharias. No, 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 no. Name John. And they had a connection fit. Can you imagine the point when they when they named Jesus? Who on earth are you? Listen, we run the genealogy of Joseph. We run uh, in Matthew 1. We run the genealogy of, 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 uh, uh, of Mary in Luke chapter 3. Who in their family is named Jesus? Or Joshua? Not a one. Joshua was of Ephraim. Uh, uh, did we just read something about Ephraim? Verse 5. They're going against Jerusalem. Okay. So the name. How many Jewish names could they have picked? You want a good idea? Read First Chronicles. And count every single name. That is all the names they could have given Jesus. But they chose Emmanuel. Jesus. Jehovah saved. All right, buddy, butter and honey shall he eat, that he may know to refuse the evil and choose the good. Sinless perfection. It doesn't say uh, for all have sinned. He's going to refuse the evil and choose the good. There's no option there. He forever chooses the good and refuses the evil all the time. How many people you know that do that? That's an impossibility. Listen, in my own pro in my own life, there are times when I refuse the good and choose the evil. The eyes of the Lord in every place behold the evil and the good. What my life story is evil and good. I have both, I'm sorry to say. This person we're talking about, 742 years before his birth, says that he's going to choose the good and always refuse the evil. Impossibility for man, just a human man. For before the child shall know to refuse evil and choose good, again, it's it's backed up. The land that thou abhorrest, okay? It has to be a time when God abhors the land. You know what he does in the land in 70 AD? He sends in Titus and wipes them completely out. He just told Ahaz, I'm going to give you a break from Ephraim. I'm going to give you a break from Syria. They're not going to do nothing to you. So he's not abhorring the land now. Well, it could have been when, when Nebuchadnezzar came in. Yeah, but the virgin didn't conceive. She didn't have a son. They didn't call his name Emmanuel. He wasn't perfect. So it could have been the first captivity. 
And God gave them love and gave them Ezra and Nehemiah. And they went back to the land. They built the temple. They built the city back up. And the temple that Ezra, uh, uh, Ezra, wow, the temple that Ezra builds is the same temple that's been reconstructed. But that's the same temple that Herod goes there and fixes up that Jesus walks into. Even 400 years of silence. Jesus gets angry at that temple and starts busting down the table and says, listen, your house is left desolate. Your house. See you later. And then the next one, last one, I lost count, shall be forsaken both her kings. It has to be a time that when both kings are gone. And when Jesus Christ is born and lives 742 years later, up to about 777 years later from this, isn't that an interesting number? If that's if that's the correct number, about the time you would die would be 777 years later. We've had two impossibilities in this prophecy, and yet they come to pass. And modern Bibles change it. They destroy, they get rid of, they remove the essential part of the Lord Jesus Christ, his virgin birth. If it's a young lady or whatever, that means Mary could have slept with anybody and anyone to have a baby. You know why she takes off to Elizabeth's house? After she conceived the Holy Spirit? You know, Joseph wasn't around. To have a witness of two. For out of the mouth of two or three witnesses shall it be established. And here is the witness. It's a priest that works in the holy place. And his faithful wife that is recorded in Luke chapter 1. That are perfect in the law and obeying to God. To say that this woman has been pure. Has been outside of any man. I believe it's six months she's with Elizabeth. Three or six months. So if anybody would say that Mary was a young woman that, that had an intercourse with men, they could call up Elizabeth and, and uh, uh, Zacharias and say, no, she was in our house. We stand to that. And we're the priests. We're the Levites. And later on in Jesus' ministry, they turn around in the book of John and say, We be not born of fornication like you were. Denying the virgin birth of Isaiah 7. And those same ones say, Well, we have no king but Caesar. Isaiah chapter 7. Out of their own mouths, they deny the virgin birth in verse 14, and they affirm verse 16. We have no king but Caesar. And this is talking to a man who he said, listen, don't worry about the enemy coming. You're taken care of. Give me a, uh, ask for a sign. I'll give you a sign. No, thank God he didn't ask for, uh, ask for a sign. Maybe we're not got this. I don't know what he would have asked for. But because he he told God, I will not tempt you. Look at the sign that the Lord gives us. And guess what? It was not fulfilled in his time. And none of his sons saw it. Because none of his sons were on the throne. They quit at uh, uh, Kaniah. That was it. That's the last king in Judah, which is the last king of, of Israel. Proper. Isaac, Abraham, Jacob. So you need to get yourself a King James Bible and get the truth. 
Um, like I said, I can I can quote I can give you the Hebrew and stuff like that, but the English says virgin. You know where virgin is. And conceive. Impossible. But nothing would God isn't that what God said to Mary? Nothing shall be impossible. He's going right back to the he's going right back quoting the, the virgin birth. It's impossible for man, but it ain't impossible for me for God. Look at that. I stick to the God of gods and Lord Jesus Christ, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who is the Lamb of God, which took away my sin of 